Watch you guys got another video on how to fix your PC's high temperature and overheating CPU. Now, if you're getting thermal throttling on your mini PC or any other PC or laptop, I'm going to show you how you can address this with some free software. So this is a mini PC that was sent to me for a review. I did a, a video yesterday on showing you how the thermal throttling was affecting performance of this system. It is also causing overheating. Now it's important if you're buying one of these mini PCs that you get good ventilation and good adequate cooling system on these mini PCs because they're so small and compact, they can uh, overheat very easily. You can see the exhaust uh, fan here on the back. So what I'll do is I'll show you a quick benchmark of this particular uh, unit and I'll show you exactly what was happening uh, with this unit when we was getting thermal throttling and overheating. But before I do that, let me just quickly show you inside here. So inside, there's not a lot of room for air to move around. Underneath the board here, there is just a single fan, which looks something like this. So you're going to see basically the outer main frame and the cooling fan. Then you get the main board and then you'll get all the other components inside there. So that is what we're dealing with here. This is where we can put the SSD in here. So you can see there's going to be quite a lot of heat generated inside of these and controlling the heat on these little mini PCs is quite difficult. But the fan in these, believe it or not, does quite a good job at cooling uh, these mini PCs. So let me just show you what the problem we're getting with this one. So I'm going to do a quick benchmark using Geekbench. Now Geekbench is not a super highly intensive benchmark, but it shouldn't be causing the problems that uh, this is causing to this mini PC. Now I've been told by the manufacturer of this mini PC that it must be faulty and they're going to be sending me a new one. But let's start the CPU benchmark here and we'll see what sort of uh, results happen and what we're getting going on with the system here. Now, straight away, you can see the core temperature has run straight up to 99 Celsius. Also, which is more alarming, the core distance to TJ Maxx is 1 Celsius. Now, I've had this going up to 4 Celsius, which is not good. And then on here, the CPU package is 99 Celsius. And a the thermal throttling is kicking in to protect the chip. It starts to step down uh, the speed of the processor to try and protect it. And you can see here, we've got the package ring thermal throttle, yes, and also thermal throttling on the core is happening as well. So this is to slow it down and make sure it's protecting that processor. And this will impact on the results of the overall benchmark. And if we take a look at the scores, 1,591, and the multi-core score is 4,877. So that's the scores we got with it in its current state. Now, this thermal throttling was even happening when I was installing programs, which is not good, and it was causing major problems with this little mini PC. If you jump into the BIOS, you may be thinking that you'll be able to uh, control the, the amount of voltage uh, going to the CPU, and you might be able to control the power, but you can't because everything is locked out uh, inside the BIOS. You can't do anything from the BIOS with this particular mini PC. And a lot of other mini PCs are the same. Same goes for a lot of laptops. So how can we fix this problem? And we obviously can't do it inside the BIOS. If you go into the BIOS here, you can see everything is locked and you can't really do much inside here. The multiplier is locked uh, and other things are locked in here. So we can't do anything uh, from the BIOS location. So we're going to have to use software to try and uh, do something to stop it thermal throttling. Now, this might not be possible, but we'll give it a go anyway. So we're going to try to attempt to do this inside Throttle Stop. Now, if we look inside Throttle Stop, it gives us some uh, check mark boxes which we can mess around with. For instance, if we want to lower uh, the turbo on it, we can disable the turbo of the CPU, which should obviously bring down those temperatures. But it will also impact on the score, the overall score that we get. We also have speed shift EPP, which we can adapt and change. I can take that from 128 down to zero and we can run a benchmark. So let me go ahead and quickly do that. 
So I've got disabled turbo checkmarked and I've also got the speed shift EPP set to zero instead of 128. So I've left that as is, we're gonna save this and we're gonna run the same benchmark. And you'll probably see that the thermal throttling will stop and we won't get any thermal throttling. The temperatures will come down, but it will impact the overall score uh, by a fair bit. So I'm just gonna let this go through and I'll speed this process up. So as you can see, there was no thermal throttling throughout that test, I've speeded it up and we had no overheating of the CPU. The overall score was 1032 and the multi-core score was 4127. So it's a fair bit of a drop so looking at the previous scores here on the bottom, we have dropped quite a bit by disabling the turbo and also making that other change to our setting. It's impacted it quite a bit. So we're not going to be using the speed shift EPP set to zero, and we're not going to be using the disabled turbo. So I've unchecked marked those and put them back to default settings. Now, if we look at the setting here, you can see we can't even uh, mess with the uh, offset voltage well I can't change the voltages here because they are locked we can't unlock these and change them I was going to give it a offset voltage of say for instance 100 millivolts or something like that to try and step it down a little bit to stop it being so aggressive and causing thermal throttling and overheating of the CPU I don't really want to uh, obviously push it to its limits like that for long periods of time so with this, we can't use these settings. Now there's also some other ones on the top right, which is Intel GPU, CPU, cache, iGPU, unslice, and also system agent. These would be all reduced down to, say for instance, minus 100 millivolts, but we can't do that. So we won't be able to use those settings on this particular chip. So what we're gonna have to do is find another way of trying to bring this down without having so much of an impact on the CPU itself. So it's quite a complex thing, but I'm gonna take a look at it. So here you can see there is some ranges here, but this is adding millivolts and I don't wanna add anything in. I wanna take it off uh, the actual CPU itself. So let's take a look at the throttle stop TPL setting here. Let's go in here and take a look at the power here. So we can see there's quite a few things we can mess around with. I'm going to try to have a go at the power balance here. You can see it's 9 and 13. I'm going to make some changes here. So I've done some fettling with these uh, figures. And you can see I've got this change now to 6. And I'll make a change to this 13. Now to save time, I've sort of skipped all of the benchmarking. I made little changes here. And I see that there was little changes in the thermal throttling. So now I've gone with six and eight. We'll try the power balance at six minimum and eight maximum. And what we'll do is we'll run another test and see how it goes from here. So what I'm gonna do is reset and run the CPU benchmark again, and we'll see what sort of uh, scores we get. Now it's looking good because the thermal throttling hasn't kicked in just yet. So that's good. And the temperatures are now staying at around about 85 and we've also got a minimum of 54 so they're not going into the red which is a good thing which means it's not going to thermal throttle but is it going to impact the score uh, too much and that's what we need to find out in a second once we start kicking in and now you can see it has got thermal throttling kicking in it says yes and it's starting to step down because it's got to 90 celsius so it's not instantly gone straight to thermal throttling, which means we are sort of winning the battle. We are starting to make changes and it's not all lighting up red. So we're getting the uh, the actual settings here, like TJ Maxx is not getting uh, lit up red and there's a bunch of other figures on here. So let's go back in and make this power balance six and six and we will click okay here and we'll try six and six and I'll let this run right through and hopefully we can now stop it thermal throttling and hopefully uh, this will resolve the issue. So run the CPU benchmark once more. And again, I haven't let it cool down. We're doing one after the other and we're just gonna let this run right the way through. I'll speed this up. And as you can see here, 
There's no more thermal throttling. We haven't got any red at all across the board here. And that means what score do we get? And we get 1,589 on the single core score. And multi core score is 4,875. So the stock scores when they were overeating was 1,591 and 4,877. And as you can see, there's not much of a difference. We've managed to crack it. We've managed to get it nice and cool. It's not overeating. It's not thermal throttling. And we haven't impacted the performance, which is absolutely fantastic. Let's quickly do the installation test here and see what happens and see whether we get any thermal throttling or any temperature issues. And again, I'm running this with the throttle stop settings that I've got set. And as you can see here, it's working perfectly fine. We are now getting no issues at all. We're not getting thermal throttling. We're not getting any issues on the CPU package of overheating. Yes, it's going up to 90 Celsius, but it's not getting super hot and it's not getting in the red. And that's important because we want to have longevity for this mini PC and we don't want it getting in the red and causing major problems. If you start getting that TJ Maxx getting into for Celsius, which we see it getting into in the red, it was too much. It was going over and it wasn't stepping down enough. It was getting super hot and we was having major problems. But as you can see here, we're having no issues now whatsoever. And I've left this running as you can see. So Frog Stop has done its thing. It's done what it needs to do. We've got this in the safe zone and stopping it overheating and having major problems. Now, I just wish that the manufacturers would take a bit more time and care uh, to make sure that all of these products are running properly before they leave the factory. Obviously, I shouldn't have to do this, but it just goes to show you uh, if you can get it working exactly how you meant to have it working, you're not going to have the problems like uh, throttling and also overheating. So a good job from Throttle Stop there. It's really done its job. So I hope this video has been educational and been some sort of use to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I will see you on our Discord server for a chat. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments section below. If you need help with Throttle Stop, then drop over on our Discord server and we'll do our best to help you over there. Have a lovely Sunday, and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.